Thank you very much, Scott. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you today. Amen. Well, as you can probably agree with me, we're in an information overload society, aren't we? As you know, 24-hour news on TV and now in the palm of our hand, 24-hour news. Will he be confirmed? Won't he be confirmed? The last two weeks, seems like that's all we ever heard about. We know what's going on across the world immediately now, especially now with social media. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some positive uses for social media, for the kingdom, and also just even for the earth. For instance, um, people who've been in hurricanes have been able to reach out to let people know that they're in need using their social media, which is kind of nice. The first responders can actually pinpoint where they are and how to get them to the rescue teams that are nearby. So as we know, this, this is very helpful, too. It doesn't all have to be negative, right? But on the other hand... We also know that social media can have, it's raised the level of fear and insecurity in our society today. For instance, you've probably wondered, are there more child abductions, for, for example? Are there more child abductions now than when we were kids? Or because of instant news, do we just hear about it more often and more quickly? I don't know the answer to that. But I will say that when anything happens around the world, we know immediately the church shootings... School shootings, terrorist attacks, I mean, this has raised a level of insecurity and unrest among us, right? Some of it's probably been fueled by our devices, by our social media. And I don't necessarily blame social media for this, but doesn't it seem like the world's moving further and further away from peace and from love instead of moving closer to, uh, it's moving us closer to hatred and discord. It seems like it to me. Maybe I'm wrong, I hope I am. But it seems to me that that's the way the world is moving. And I go, as I, as I read Revelation, we did a, a sermon series on Revelation two summers ago. I guess it shouldn't surprise me, right, if that is the case. But where can you go for peace and security then? Where can you go? You try to hide, but that didn't help. Sooner or later, uncertainty catches up to everyone, and we just got to face the, the hard reality that We live in an insecure, uncertain world, right? King David. King David was familiar with uncertainty too. David wrote Psalm 62 that we read earlier this morning, and he tells us where he found his rest and peace. He was under serious attack from an enemy who wanted to overthrow him. You might be thinking, well, it's King Saul. Remember when when David was young, King Saul was out to get him, to do him in, right? But probably not the case at this context in Psalm 62. Why? I know there are hints in the psalm that David is an older man now. To describe himself in Psalm 62, he uses this, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence. Well, wait a minute. Walls and fences are usually straight, except over time, when they're older, they start to lean or they start to totter. So probably... When David was mentioning this, he was probably an older king at this point. The psalm might be referring to his son Absalom, who wanted to overthrow his own father and take the kingdom away. Oh, that rebellious Absalom. Listen to this. Look what he did. He would get up early in the morning. He would go out to the the city gates where a lot of the people would assemble every day and just talk, chit-chat, you know, kind of like the water cooler or in the commons or whatever people might might find a place to talk nowadays. I guess it's on social media, right? But back then, they would go to the city gates and they would talk and talk and talk. He would get up really early and go there and he would try to convince them, saying stuff like, if I were king, oh, your life would be so much better if I were king instead of my dad. Well, I gotta tell you, he was a good salesman. Look what the Bible says. He stole the hearts of the men of Israel. He smooth-talked the people for four years, and he did it so well that he gathered supporters, and he finally just declared himself, I'm king now, I'm king, we're going to overthrow my dad. It's a coup, but I'm going to be king now. And he had a lot of supporters to help him with that. Well, it got so bad that when the news got to King David, he had to flee the city, flee Jerusalem. Thankfully, The Lord had not abandoned his people, had not abandoned his chosen King David, and the Holy Spirit moved Absalom to take some bad advice. 
He did not go after his dad right away. But man, oh man, still, David was in a really insecure position. That may have been the context for Psalm 62. Might have been, but no matter what, even if it weren't the context, whatever situation that David was in at the time, he's very clear about his salvation. He tells us exactly where he found his peace and rest from threat and uncertainty. Would you please read the verses of God's word on the screen with me out loud? For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him? Like a leaning wall, a tottering fence. They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. Going on, read with me. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock. My refuge is from God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Look at that. Look at that confession of faith. My rock, my hope is in him. My rock, my salvation, my refuge. You know, David's confession can be your confession as well. Psalm 62 tells us exactly where we find our rest and peace when we're confronted with the uncertainty and threats in our world. Rest and peace, where are they found? In God alone. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He's our salvation. And he is, like Scott said, he's our pillow. He's our rest. Melissa Falkowski is a teacher of English and journalism at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. You remember that sad story. When she learned that there was an active shooter in the building, she took 19 of her students and put them in a closet in her classroom. Can you imagine? Putting 19 because she knew that there was an active shooter in the place. She was going to do whatever it took to keep her students safe. It reminds us this historic woman is a reflection of who God is and how when evil rages, he hides us under the shelter of his wings. God who sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to be your life, he is also your eternal refuge. Jesus, you could say, is like that assistant coach, Aaron Feiss, also at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Coach Feiss stopped in front of the students to protect them from the bullets that were coming their way. Aaron Feist gave his life for his students. On the cross, Jesus gave his life for you and for me. What was going to crush you and us, you and me, forever, for eternity, our sin, eternal death, the power of the devil, what was going to crush us, Jesus took on to himself as our substitute so that it would not crush you. He died in your place. The only place that you can find lasting rest in this world, this turbulent world, is in the one who conquered death and who gives us eternal life. Through the living word of God found in the Bible, you receive rest. Through the presence of Jesus, the real presence of Jesus in the Lord's Supper, we are hidden in his grace, we're hidden in his forgiveness, we're we're hidden in his love. That's where we can find our rest and our peace. Only place. This world, I tell you, brothers and sisters, you know as well as I do, it's going to continue to rage until Jesus comes back on that last day. It's going to continue to be insecure. It's going to continue to be uncertain. It may even injure you physically or emotionally, but Jesus, your Lord, who is Lord over all, he's your rock of protection. He's your refuge of salvation. David had an enemy, right? He had an enemy early on, King Saul, He had an enemy, his own son, Absalom, later on in life. He wanted to overthrow him, wanted to get him out of there, wanted to kill him. You and I have an enemy who wants to kill us too, especially kill our faith. Our arch enemy would would love for us to believe that we really don't have God's love and forgiveness. He whispers in your ear. He lies to you and says, 
Do you think God really forgives you after all you've done? You know, you remember after you did that, you really think God has forgiven that sin? That's what the devil loves to whisper in your ear, these lies to get you to stop trusting in the all-sufficient salvation of Jesus Christ. And he does it every day. Sometimes we can be tempted to start listening to that whisper of lies. Sometimes we can tempted, be tempted to actually believe it. And we think to ourselves, well, maybe, maybe I do have to do something to pay for my sins. Really, it's only by trusting in Jesus? Maybe I got to do something. Brothers and sisters, whenever we do that, that's not the way of rest. That's not the way to understand that Jesus has already accomplished that job. And when we do that, we're basically saying, Jesus, thanks, but you didn't finish the job. We've got to do something. No, that's not what God's word of love says. God's word of love revealed in the Bible says that Jesus did it all. It is finished. God invites you into his presence to stand in silence and to receive from him his love and complete forgiveness. Not based on anything you or I did. All based on what Jesus has done for us. David lived in uncertainty most of his life. David received from God the rest that only God can give. David received a silence that the world cannot take away. You and I, admit it, we live in uncertainty. But we have the same assurance that David did. The Lord is our refuge. He's our peace and our rest. If you're trying to find your peace and rest in something other than that, Ultimately, it's ultimately God is your refuge. Sure, it's okay to take measures to lock your doors. That's, that's smart. It's okay to take other measures for your safety if you need to, of course. But ultimately, those things are used by God. Ultimately, our rest, our peace, our fortress, our salvation is in God alone, especially expressed in his son, Jesus Christ, what he did in his life, death, and resurrection for you. That's our ultimate peace. Because of his son, Jesus, we can daily say along with David, read it out loud with me, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Lord God, we shake a lot. In this world, we shake a lot in fear. Forgive us, O oh Lord. We ask you, Lord, help us to place all of our trust, all of our faith, all of our security in you alone, Lord. Remind us of your protection. Remind us of your abiding presence with us, that you never leave us alone to face this uncertain world by ourselves. You're right here with us. Our rock, our redeemer, our salvation, our rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.